time to take a break from the Nut and Fancy Project gear show for just a little bit. Talk some life philosophy. I'm in the mood tonight. Scruffy looking. Yeah, I know. Hi guys, Nut and Fancy. Another Nut and Fancy life philosophy video. I'm excited to be in front of the camera tonight. Actually, I usually hate being in front of the camera. No joke. Guys who've been watching the project probably know that. But for important stuff like this, I don't mind coming out in front of this. And I'm grateful, honestly, to have you as my friends across the world, my subscribers. I'm grateful to have an audience. And I'm grateful to have an audience uh, that will listen to stuff like this. It's coming from the heart, like all my philosophy videos do, for no other reason to perhaps help you in your life and to impart some of my life lessons at this stage of my life. I'm always learning. I'm always progressing. I hope we all are. And I'm going to lay some things out that is, have helped me. Okay, I'm first going to start. Hopefully my sound cushion doesn't fall down from the wall. It's threatening to do so. Uh, I'm going to start out by asking you a question. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Specifically, if you were to describe to me your job, where you are, what kind of person you are, what do you look like, could you do so in really detailed fashion 10 years from now? How about five years from now? Where do you see yourself in five years? <clears throat> Again, I want details. I want, if we're talking jobs, I want to know how much you earning. Not that that's an end all. Go reference my workers are few video. But I want to know what you're, what you're doing. What's your job? What's your capacity? What car are you driving? What do you look like? Are you happy? Do you have a girlfriend? Are you married? Do you have children? Where do you live? All these specific things. This video is meant for everybody, by the way, uh, for young folks to old folks. Because as long as our heart's still beating, we can make changes in life and we, we can become better people. I truly believe that. I've seen it personally in my life. So whoever you are, do you have an answer to those questions? In five years and in ten years, where do you see yourself? If you don't have an answer for that, don't feel bad. There's a lot of people that don't. And perhaps they never, they've never even thought about it. They're like... I don't, I don't really know where I'm going to be in five years and ten years. The, this video, for me, Nut and Fancy, is designed, perhaps, to cure that. Or not cure it, but to change that. To give you some direction from you, not me, from you, and maybe start engineering your life. A lot of the stuff I'm going to say here you could probably find in motivational tapes. I really haven't listened to any ever in the history of ever. But truth is truth. You'll find it in a lot of different quarters. And when I talk about some of these concepts, you may have heard them somewhere else. And you go, yeah, that's, that's true. I, I know that's true. I've seen people do that. I know it brings success. So I may echo some motivational speakers or whatever. I don't know. This is all coming from me in my own life. And I want to show you some writings from myself way back that will kind of prove it. Ten years, five years, do you know where you're going to be? I have so many concepts i got to cover tonight. I want to be time-pressed. Excited to do this video. I don't know, I just feel it tonight. I, in the spirit tonight. got to talk about it. Okay, first up, I'm going to use my own life experiences as a springboard for making examples throughout the video. <clears throat> if you guys don't know it, subscribers to the Nut and Fancy Project, thank you very much, my friends across the world, supporting me, making the whole thing possible. Love you guys. Thank you. They already know that I'm a retired lieutenant colonel, U.S. Air Force pilot, an instructor, aircraft commander, flight commander. They wanted me to be squadron commander. I don't know if I ever told you guys that. I said thanks, but no thanks. <coughs> and I retired last December. I might make a video about that in and of itself. Okay, these, my sound cushion is getting ready to rip down from the wall. Um, I pop it up so I don't echo so much. Uh, so I, I know flying. I know the flying world, the jet world. I know how it is to be a U.S. Air Force jet pilot, to participate in combat, support operations around the world, been there, done it. I know what it's like to fly jets, heavy jets. I know what it's like to land in very challenging conditions. I'm going to draw on those experiences. Okay, I'm not going to do that to self-aggrandize, say, oh, look at how cool I am. I want to do it to show you the power of what I'm trying to instill in you. And the first concept I want to tell you, or to impress upon you, is have a vision. Have a vision in your mind 
of where you are going in life. Engineer your life. When I was a little kid, if you were to say, hey, one day you're going to be strapped in the cockpit of a T-38 and you're going to be pulling six Gs, I would have been going, oh, really? <laughs> I didn't always have you know, a, a distinct vision that I would arrive. And it, heck, if you were to ask me that question or paint that vision for me at age 15, maybe I would have been a little bit, surpri a little bit surprised. I say a little bit because from an early age, I did cultivate that vision. That's what I wanted to do. My dad was a jet pilot, several tours in Vietnam, flew OV-10s, F-100s, very storied Air Force career when you could fly all those Century Series fighters back in the late 60s into the early 70s. An awesome time to be in the Air Force. But that, doesn't, that did not necessarily impart to me a guarantee of success, of achieving that goal as an Air Force pilot. What's your goal? Again, asking the question, do you have a goal? What moves you and what are you passionate about? That's how you should obtain a goal. Okay, when I say have a vision for your life, I want you to paint a very detailed, emotional, that's a very important point, motivational vision for yourself. Okay, and stepping back from the Air Force thing for just a second, what if it's uh, you want to make a restaurant and you sit down and you close your eyes and you imagine that it's going to be the best restaurant ever. That you can see your decorations, the decor, the theme of the restaurant. You can see patrons coming in. You can see you're very busy. You can see the critics uh, writing your restaurant up very well. And you having all kinds of friends in the restaurant. You can imagine this in great detail. And to you, that's motivational. And when you close your eyes and you have this vision, again, going with this example, Let's say you're a, a girl that's only 16 years old. This video is for everybody. Boys, girls, black, white, doesn't matter. That motivates you. Okay, That is your vision you're going to hang on to. It's motivational and it propels you forward. That's what my vision did of being an Air Force pilot. Long before I took any of the steps to make it towards that career, I had the vision. And I cultivated that image in my mind, and it motivated me. Uh, when I was a little kid, I had a little bike. You guys are going to laugh. But I used to like drive my bike around pretending I was in an A-10 strafing, supporting the troops. That's what I did, man. I loved it. I'd go out on Saturday afternoon on Langley Air Force Base. That's where we are stationed at the time. And I'd just take my A-10 to strafing <laughs> on my BMX bike. And I was cultivating the vision, though, even at that young age. I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, also, this vision you should research. Just don't jump into something. It's kind of like dating. Okay, I'm going to talk to my male audience now. Let's say you see a really hot looking girl and she's attractive to you and you're like, oh, she's hot. Okay, immediate interest, right? Immediate connection. Let's say you get a date with her. Is that enough though to build a relationship that she's good looking? No, it's not. There has to be some depth there. Hopefully she's kind, you know, that she is intelligent. She can carry on a conversation. She might make a good mom for your kids. Stuff that's really, really important, right? Some guys are saying, well, there's other stuff important. I know, I'm just hitting the big stuff. I'm talking really big stuff, life important stuff. You have to do some research on that girl. Maybe she is the one. Maybe she is awesome. Maybe she ain't. And then on the outside, she looks perfect. And I dated a few girls like this, by the way. And then when I got to know him, I'm like, oh, not so perfect. You know, I don't think I, I, I don't see myself with this person. That's probably what she was thinking, by the way, too. She's like, this is that fancy character, not so perfect. <laughs> the same thing with your life vision, though. Do some research on it, okay? For me, going back to the pilot thing, uh, I started researching it. Now I had an advantage because my dad did it. Okay, I could see what my dad was doing and how it worked for him, how it didn't work for him. And I had an insight directly because I would go to work with him, not in the jet, but I'd go to his squadrons, hang out with his buddies. I'd crawl all over the jets. You could do that back in the 70s. It was pretty awesome, by the way. At Langley, they had like a NASA hangar. Check that out. They had like the uh, Canberra, the NASA Canberras painted black. I'd call, crawl all over those. So cool. The Helos, F-104 Starfighters, all with the cockpits up. And here I am like 
10 years old crawling through the ejection seats, chair flying these things. It was awesome. Yeah, the ejection seats were hot, by the way. My dad, though, back then he goes, hey, you know, these ejection seats are hot to make sure you know you don't pull that. He briefed me. Going back to my dangerous things video, right? He taught me no accidents. But yeah, I had some insight. Uh, research it and see if it's right for you. Just don't launch into it. Take that pretty girl out on a date, ask some questions, get into some certain situations where the real personality will come out. Do your research. I have, an, I have a philosophy and it's called uh, the life pie, that's P-I-E. And uh, you need to understand what that thing you're, and I'm kind of talking about careers here, but I'm gonna kind of hope to flex into some other things. You need to understand what that career you're choosing is going to exact from your life pie. Imagine we have an apple pie. We can only segment the apple pie in so many quadrants. Until we run out of quadrants, we run out of space, and we are maxed. If you are an emergency room doctor, how much does your career take of your life pie? Uh, I'm going to ballpark it. Okay, I know we have a lot of doctors in TMP. <coughs> Way in the comments, but an active emergency room physician on beeper, I would say maybe 60% of his life pie is taken up by his career. The reason I'm bringing this example up is because you need to research that career you're choosing. What percentage, once you get beyond all the requirements, the obstacles for you to get there, is it going to require? Do you want to have a job that takes up 75% of your free time? That you take it home at night? That it weighs on you? That it stresses you? It stresses your family? Do your research. Girl looks hot, right? Yeah. You better ask some questions, go on a date with your career and find out. Go ask people who do this career. Say, hey, is this, this good? Research, research, research. There's all kinds. On the internet alone, you can do research and find out. Let's say you do, ja you do just that. You love it, and it is the most awesome thing ever. You're going to go for it. Okay? You are going in with eyes open is what I'm saying, that you know what it's like. And I did that as being a jet, jet jockey. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to be fighting wars. Might get shot down. Cool. Not cool, really, but I understand. I'm going to be gone a lot. To pay isn't great. I mean, my wife and I lived off $700 for two weeks forever as a second lieutenant once we did get there. Okay, but I was committed. How's your vision? If you were to ask me once I have that vision, where do you want to be in 10 years? There's that question again. Let's say you asked me right before I went into pilot training. I would have painted you a picture that I'm in a major weapon system in the U.S. Air Force. I'm either flight lead or an aircraft commander, probably an instructor in the weapon system. Turned out for me to be KC-135. Awesome. Love that weapon system. KC-135 guys. What's up? Love those guys. That's what I would have painted you a very detailed picture. Don't underestimate the importance of that detailed vision. It's got to be palpable. Okay? It's got to bring you fulfillment when you close your eyes and you think about it. You should see everything. You know what I thought about? Dudes, I thought about soloing in the T-38, the supersonic jet aircraft. That's what I thought about. It drove me. It motivated me. Strapping on the G-suit. I'd close my eyes. I'd just picture myself walking up to, at the time, a white T-38. Strapping on the G-suit. Crawling in, doing my checklist, putting that cool helmet on. I should have brought it. It's in the other room. And I could go from pre-flight to flight and land all, all without leaving my chair. In the Air Force, we call that chair flying. I didn't even know what it was. I was doing it even before I got in the Air Force. It's got to be motivational, that vision. It is very, very important. If it's not motivational for you, let's go back to the girl in the restaurant example. Maybe you don't have the right vision. Maybe that's really not what you want to do in life. You need to find out what you really want to do in life. What are your talents, by the way? What if people tell you that you're good at? Are you funny? Are you good at, are you a good musician? Are you intelligent? Are you a good writer? You have talents. Everybody has talents. Everybody does. If you can find what your talents are, dovetail them into an awesome career, double thumbs up. Okay, it might be a little bit easier for you. Doesn't mean you have to have a skill set. For me, flying, I didn't know about flying. What do I know? Nothing. Most I knew is that I was on top of a, like a Caterpillar tractor at age five in a cardboard box pretending I was a pilot. <laughs> Cultivating that vision once again. Have a vision. Part of having a vision 
is you need to start surrounding yourself by other people that have a similar vision. Book if you're surrounded by naysayers. And that goes to the next point I'll make here in a second. Okay, surround those, surround yourself by all the trappings of success which are part of that detailed vision. For me, it was, yes, model aircraft, going with my dad to the squadrons, watching jet shows. Yeah, I was surrounding myself with all those things. And it's not just career, by the way. Okay, I've been talking a lot about jobs, but I'm going to talk about personality attributes. Attributes. Uh, if I ask the question, where do you see yourself in 10 years, 5 years, what if you have some person, personal, or personal problems that you have this weakness, that weakness? How would you like to be as an individual? Would you like to be more patient? Would you like to be a better boyfriend, a better girlfriend, a better wife, a better husband? Would you like to be a better employer, an employee? And you have some issues. You have conflicts in your life that are weighing down on you. But if you close your eyes, you can say, well, I'd really like to be this way. I know I'm this way. I know I have these weaknesses. I know because people tell me all the time. I think we all go through that, by the way. We all have that. So if I ask the question, what's your vision of the way you would really like to be? Well, I'd like to be more responsible. I'd like to not be a procrastinator. Close your eyes. Use your most powerful tool, that mind you've been given by the good Lord above and put that into effect for you. And imagine yourself the way you want to be. And then for one day, go out and pretend like you're that person. Act the way you want to be in that vision. Come back that day, take stock. Wow, I had a really good day today. Guys were treating me good. Why? Because I started acting like that vision. Okay, your mind is your most powerful tool if you have that motivational, very pow powerful and realistic vision in your mind, whether it's for career or personal attributes, it will change the way you behave. Let me say that again. It will change the way you behave. Again, if it's not powerful enough to change your behavior, I suggest you work on a different vision. I'm calling it vision, you can call it a bunch of different things. For me, it was, well, I had many, but one of them was to be jet pilot in the military. That's what I wanted. Did my research. I was like, hey, Navy guys are cool. You know, land on carrier thing. What? I got to be on a cruise for six months? Research. Oof. Life pie. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, but Top Gun, man, that's cool, right? Uh, yeah, it's cool. Fun movie. Loved it. I'm not doing the Navy thing. <laughs> so I went Air Force. Have a vision. It should be motivational. And surround yourself by people that represent that vision or they're supportive of it. Uh, an example of that is I grew up partly in the great state of Alabama, loved my friends, still love my friends in Alabama. However, they were not supportive, bless their hearts, of my vision to be a United States Air Force pilot. Because they said, well, I wouldn't say, maybe that's not fair to say, they did not like me leaving the state to do it. And I was like, well, I got, I love you guys, I want to really hang out here in northern Alabama, catfishing, shooting squirrels, country living. I love it, by the way. But I want more out of life. You know, my vision was already pretty much set in my mind as a young man of what I wanted to do. And I felt like if I stayed in Alabama around that culture, it was going to suck me in. It was going to drag me down, and I was going to end up working at the nursery in a minimum wage job. I'm saying like flower nursery or something. Not that that's bad, but I wanted more. It's not bad to want more. And some people will drag you down. And that gets to our next point, and that is protect your vision. Protect your vision. Don't let people destroy that vision. And they may do it intentionally. They may do it unintentionally. By the way, as this sound thing crashes, I'm going to have to stop the video and tape it back up. My studio sucks. <laughs> protect your vision. My friends in Alabama, I love them to death. I mean that with all sincerity of heart. But they didn't really get it of where I wanted to go in life, what I wanted to do with myself. And they didn't understand that that takes sacrifice. It means leaving. It means going to school. It means getting on the road. It means doing some tough stuff, making some hard calls to get there. Welcome to the road to success. Some people may just not get it. Okay, and they are just like, well, can't you stay here with us? 
I'll tell you what, at age 17, when I graduated high school, I was being pulled in by that. And it was a tractor beam for me. And it was a very difficult thing for me. I left the state of Alabama to go pursue other things. And it was hard. There was a lot of, a lot of tears involved. I left, I left mom. I left all my good friends. And it was one of those life-changing things for me that I had to do because I had to follow my vision. I said it early in the video, and I'm going to show you where I get it from, but live your life to impress yourself. Okay. I learned as a young man, probably in my mid-20s, don't live your life to please others. What? That just seems so obvious, right? Not really. There's a lot of us that when we're younger, we live our lives to probably impress others, to say, hey, look what I'm doing now. Mom, do you like me? Hey, Dad, I'm doing this. Do I get your approval finally? It doesn't lead to happiness. Okay, don't live your life to impress others. You find out what your vision is, you cultivate that vision, you protect that vision, and you pursue it with no apologies. You have to do it. You have to. It is, it, it is compelling for you. To do anything else, you will feel like you've cheated yourself in life and you'll always have regrets. As hard as it was for me to peel myself away from all my beloved friends and family in Alabama, I don't have any regrets. Because I did, I followed my heart. I followed that vision. Okay, some people may not have your best interests in mind. And I kind of made mention of this in my other philosophy video, Workers Are Few. That they, for whatever reason, and I don't want to be negative, but for whatever reason, they know they are not going to achieve that much in life. And they may sense that you might, and their goal in life is to make sure that you don't, because it will make them feel better about themselves. And I know there's a lot of heads out there in the audience right now on the internet shaking their heads going, yep, I know people like that. We all do, that they are actually trying to drag you down and destroy you. I've seen this in the Nut and Fancy Project on me personally in YouTube. I've had tons of this. Whatever, press on, man. It doesn't mean a thing, really. You have to be true to your vision. And speaking of TMP, I have a vision of TMP, where I want it to go, what I want to do, the videos I have. Each video is its own project. It's all up here. It's very, I mean, I could lay out for you in great detail five years from now where TMP is, ten years from now where TMP is. I can't because it puts more stress on me because then guys are saying, where, where's this video when you're doing that? It's too much stress for me. But there's a vision, bro. I guarantee you. Okay, and hopefully you have that. Protect your vision. Don't let someone come in there and tromp on it and steal it from you. Like, what? You want to be a pilot? By the way, I had this. <laughs> okay, good luck. <laughs> Seriously, people, uh, you know, they mean well sometimes, and sometimes they don't. Follow your mission. Don't live your life to please others. Whatever your mission is, press on, man. You did your research, right? You know that's the right vision. It's compelling motivational, personal vision for you, where you're going to be in 5 and 10 years, maybe 20 years. Energize your vision. Okay? Energize your vision. Don't just let it, don't dream about it one time and then do nothing about it. Let me show you an example of how I did that. I'm going to go back to the 1980s to show you this. Hmm, interesting, interesting. One way you can energize your vision, this may sound stupid, it's true, I know, because I've done it, is keep a journal, okay? And in that journal, you have to be totally honest. You just say real stuff. You can't lie to your journal. You talk to your journal. You can vent. You can be pissed in the journal, but you have to keep a journal. I did that as a young man, okay? I'm going to show you some journal pages from 1985, okay? I'm talking about energizing your vision. I'm going to show you some scribble that I did on top of my journal and some other stuff and I'm going to hide the writing. You guys don't need to know the writing. But nothing fancy. We want to know what you you wrote. Nah, later on I'm going to show you. Okay, I got to hide this. And <laughs> I hope I don't screw this up. Okay, so this is my journal and in the top, look at what I wrote. This and the doodle I have here. Jet pilot helmet. Okay, 1985. And look at the saying I wrote to myself, 1985. Live, live your life to impress yourself. Okay, that those lessons I talked to you about, about not living your life for others, that's when I learned it. 
1985, I was like, you know, this just ain't working for me, trying to impress people, and just ain't working. I'm sorry I have to hide all this lettering, but that's the way it is. Okay, so then in my journal pages, <laughs> then I would do this stuff right here. I have an F-16 here. Okay, and then I have a space shuttle on descent, and I have some troops out there. Okay, and what am I doing with all that? Why do I have that? Is it just for goofing around? No. I'm energizing my vision. Okay, I'm motivating myself when no one else would motivate me. And by the way, uh, when you see these pic pictures, this is after my dad got killed. In our own plane, by the way. In our personal plane, my dad died. Okay, so I know a little bit about a lot of stuff you guys have gone through. And I had no one, no one that was supporting me in the vision to be a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. Definitely, definitely not my mom. She was not on board. Ask Vera Linus about that. She was not on board. She was very much against it. She's like, hey, you are not going to be a pilot. I don't want you blown out of the sky. I don't want you being a POW. I'm like, Mom, love you. I'm being a pilot. Here we go, 1985, check that sweet picture out. Jet helmet, camo tape, love it. For me, that was motivational. Okay, it energized my vision. Okay, and the journal was a great way to keep track of that, that day by day I'd look at that and go, yeah man, I can do it, I can be there, I can get there, and I, I could show you more. There's like F-16s in here, all kinds of stuff, man. I mo you know, I just, I was feeding the fuel, feeding the fire that I had inside. I want you guys to do the same thing, whatever your vision is. Okay, if you want to be make that restaurant, I didn't mean to laugh, I think it's cool, whatever it is. If you want to be an artist, you should fuel that vision and protect the vision. Believe in yourself when no one else will. You're going to find naysayers, they're going to say, dude, you cannot do that, no way. I've talked about this in some other vids. Some mean well, like I said, some don't mean well. But your vision, if you've chosen a good one, if it's truly motivational, it will empower you and it will propel you forward. Okay, believe in yourself. And there's going to be some dark, dark days, dude. Okay, when my dad died, those were some dark days. Dark days. Because I lost my foundation. Okay, it's like the rug was pulled out from under me. And I can't even tell you how hard it was. When he died, I came home that day, phone waiting for me, my brother's on the phone. He's like, hey, dad got killed in the plane. It was like, what? I was 19 years old at the time. And it just blew my mind there will be some dark days. And there will be days that actually have you question your choice, your vision, just like I did back then. Is this right? Do I really want to do this? And then we get back to, do you have a powerful, compelling vision? Because it has to be that way. It has to be detailed. It has to be motivational for you. It has to give you personal fulfillment. If you've chosen it well and you've cultivated it, and it's real to you, you will survive the dark days. You're going to carry past the many obstacles that will be placed in front of you. I'm speaking from experience. You know, that was an obstacle there. I had people coming up to me, you're not going to be a pilot anymore, are you? Surely you're not going to be a pilot anymore. I mean, your dad died from being a pilot. I'm like, I loved my dad. Uh, I don't know what happened in that plane crash. It sucks. Life often sucks, and there's things that are outside of my control. But I'm pressing on. I'm going to be a pilot. I'm going to wear that jet pilot. I'm going to wear that G suit. I'm going to put that helmet on, and I'm going to go supersonic. And I'm going to be a military pilot. And I'm pressing on. You know, there's dark days all through your path. It's normal. Expect it. If you don't have them, something's wrong. Success weeds out the uncommitted. I'm going to say that again. It's just from me. I didn't hear it from anywhere. Success weeds out the uncommitted. 
to achieve success, you have to be committed, whatever it is. And again, we're talking about career stuff. We could also attribute it to those personal attributes if we want it. We have to be committed. If we're going to change our personal attributes, we have to be committed. Okay, we have to say some positive affirmations to ourselves, maybe 20 times, 50 times a day. Hey, I am this type of person. I don't do this or I do that. Change, be committed, put some work into it. Imagine that. And if you want to be a U.S. Air Force pilot, you better be committed. It's that way even today. Undergraduate pilot training, tough. Okay, when I, and just getting a slot for UPT, undergraduate pilot training, was tough. You know, the year I did it, long shot. They were not giving many slots out at all. My vision was there, though. I'm like, I want to work. <clears throat> Here's an important point I want to tell you guys. Remember that vision? Okay that it's going to make you do things that lead to success if it's proper and motivational. For instance, to get an undergraduate pilot training slot, I had to have a really awesome GPA in a pretty difficult university with a difficult program. Okay, business classes, yeah, pretty tough where I was. You gotta get a good GPA to be competitive to get your slot for an undergraduate pilot training. But because I saw myself in my jet, you know, I was like, okay, now I'm back here at this point in my life. And I found myself doing the things that I needed to do to get that good GPA. Staying up till 2 in the morning, working my butt off with projects. Going the extra mile. You know, putting in the A-level work. Good research. Not dinking around. I had friends all the time in college that was like, dude, let's go. Let's rock, man. We got to go out. Great friends, by the way. They wanted to go play. They had different majors. They had different goals. They had different visions than I did. And they were always pulling me away. Let's go and do this. Let's go water ballooning again. <laughs> Which, by the way, I did do a few times. But there comes a time when you got to make some hard calls, some sacrifices. Sacrifice, by definition, is giving up something good for something better. <coughs> Thanks for the invite, fellas. I'm hitting it. By the way, Mrs. Nutt and Fancy and myself, we got married about that time. Early. That's why we have kids so old. We got married early. I would, I would do it all over again. Loved it. We sacrificed together, and it was tough. You could ask her about those long study nights I had. Why? To get that good GPA, to snag that very limited undergraduate pilot training slot out of ROTC. By the way, that's how I got my commission. I almost went to the Air Force Academy. My dad talked me out of it. He's like, don't do that. Okay, and he's right. Everybody I fly with that's Air Force Academy grad is weird. <sighs> laughing so hard because I know some Zoomy guys are going to watch this and go, what? They know you are weird, dude. Academy, don't do it. You know, oh my gosh, I'm going to start cracking up. OTC or ROTC is how I would do it. <laughs> they are. They're just so different. It just changes them, man. They're so anal. Let go, dude. Turn the page. Why do they wear their ring all the time? They're still wearing their ring. Oh my gosh, 20 years later. Sorry, I'm digressing. But yeah, it was tough to qualify and get that undergraduate pilot slot. But because I was so motivated, that internal vision was so strong, so real, it just makes you do things that will lead to success. And by the way, don't forget my second point. Protect your vision. Energize your vision. You know, strengthen your vision. Wasn't that what Tom Cruise was doing in the movie Top Gun? Top Gun? He's on the motorcycle by the runway down there at Miramar and he's like, yeah, that's a cool scene. I love that movie. He's energizing his vision, man. He's on the bike. Stoked, man. It, it motivates him. That's what he wants to do. He wants to fly jets. He wants, he wants to fly the Tomcat. Rock on, man. That's what you do. And I'm just using this example again. It could be in anything. You want to be a lawyer. You want to be a doctor. You want to have your own construction business. Okay, you want to be a veterinarian. You want to be in the Coast Guard. You want to be a captain of an aircraft carrier. Dream big, man. Dream big. Ignore the naysayers. What's your personal vision? And by the way, great time to throw this in. It doesn't matter what your background is. <clears throat> but nothing fancy. I was born a poor black kid in a very poor neighborhood. Who cares? Does not matter. I come from a lower middle class background. True that. My mom often didn't have time, uh, money to pay the rent in Alabama. Do you talk about poor? Yeah, been there, done it. 
doesn't matter what your background is. If you work hard, again, applying those principles and workers are few, you'll be a commodity in the workforce, you'll be in demand. And if you have a vision and you're moving along in sequential order, logical order, you'll get there. Okay? Believe in yourself. Protect your vision. Next point. we got to cruise. Get to work. Huh. Okay, so we have a vision of where we want to be in five years. In ten years, we can really close our eyes. I can't overemphasize this. We can close our eyes and we can imagine it in great detail. Hey, nothing fancy. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about my T38. Really? What are you doing in your T38? I'm strapping in the G-suit. I'm getting ready to start the... I'm starting engine number two, closing the cockpit. There's a hot chick looking at me on the left side. She's really digging that I'm in a jet. I imagined that when I was a teenager. I'm not lying. You know, it was cool. Top gun stuff thrown in there, whatever. Motivated me, right? Not the chick thing. I'm just kind of throwing that in for funniness. Your vision should be that distinct. Again, if it's not motivational enough, you may have the wrong vision. You might want to regroup. And speaking of which, you just might fail. What? That fancy you're guaranteeing me success if I do all this. No, I'm not. Not with 100% surety. Because there may be some factors outside your control. For instance, timing. If we talk about pilot training slots, there are some guys I know, extremely talented, great GPAs. They had this done. They did very good in the AFO QT. That was a pretest to, to establish your... Um, I don't know, qualifications as a pilot. They didn't get a pilot slot because their timing was bad. There weren't that many to go around. Maybe there are two slots given for one year. Okay, great guys. They regrouped. They went on to other things. One became a lawyer. Another one became a navigator in the Air Force. Had a great career as a navigator. Regroup. Okay, I uh, can't guarantee you success, not with 100%, but pretty close, honestly. Okay, if you're just a daydreamer, though, so you're thinking about your, your vision, but you're not doing anything, your vision isn't powerful enough because a true mental image of where you're going to be in five and ten years will motivate you. When you open your eyes and you're done dreaming about it, you're going to go out and start getting it done. Okay, if you're not doing that, then you're just daydreaming. Okay, daydreamers are a dime a dozen. There's nothing more common than an un unsuccessful man with talent. You've got to have a work ethic. Again, workers are few video reference that. You've got to have a work ethic. You've got to get out there and do it. Be a doer. Okay, and there's a lot of people that aren't. There's, the world is full of mediocrity. There's a ton of people out there that are not doers. They're talkers. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You check in with them a couple years later. Hey, did you ever do this or did you ever do that? No. I'm still at McDonald's. You know. They don't have a mental image. They don't have a five-year pl five plan and a ten-year plan, and they're not pursuing it. Expect flack. I said that in the last part, but when we talk about getting to work, expect difficulty. Okay, I can't tell you how hard pilot training was. It's tough. And by that time, I was married. I had my oldest son, Tactical Doodle. He was a little baby. So here, here I am, have a little baby, and I'm in T-37 phase. Then I went to T-38 phase, advanced jet training. You got stand-ups every day where they stand you up, they give you an, uh, an emergency, hey this is your emergency, apply the bold face, tell me what you're going to do. Lieutenant, nothing fancy. Uh, count wrong, sit down. Or right, good job, you get to fly today. Because you got it wrong, you sat down, you're like apparently you don't know your procedure so your day is going to be spent studying. All your buddies are going to be flying jets today. It's humiliating. It's a good program though, it produces good pilots. U.S. Air Force undergraduate pilot training. I'm grateful to have gone through it, but man, that was tough. Hard tests, hard academic tests, check rides. Every time you turn around, you're being evaluated. You're just a you know lowly second lieutenant. You're nobody on the scale of importance on that Air Force base. You're unproven. You can wash out at any time. At any phase, you can wash out. Hey, you sucked at spin training and T-37s. See ya. We'll give you a couple more chances. If you can't get it, you're gone. I had friends that were totally washed out, both in T-37s and T-38s. The washout rate, I don't know, 40% or so. 40% of the guys did not make it through. Very committed guys, intelligent guys, for whatever reason, did not make it through. They had to regroup, go to plan B. Okay, 
Success weeds out the uncommitted. Are you committed? Are you ready to put in the midnight oil to study? Are you ready to study effectively? Are you ready to sacrifice that fun night out with your buddy so you can study and pass your test and get that good GPA? Okay, sacrifice is giving up something good for something better. Go for something better, something worthwhile. Get to work. It takes work. Finally, never arrive. What? And fancy you're telling me to have a five-year plan, a ten-year plan, a very distinct and motivational <laughs> mental image of where I want to go, and you're telling me that if I do it, it's going to energize me to levels of uh, activity that will bring success as I move towards a accomplishment of that goal. You are correct. By the way, way to listen. <laughs> How's that for a summary? You are correct. That is what I'm telling you, but you can't arrive. Okay, when I became a pilot in the U.S. Air Force, I pinned on those wings. And I finally got to strap on that most awesome of jets, the one my dad named, by the way, the T-38 Talon. It was so awesome. Okay, it was so awesome. And I'm not telling you not to take a moment to relish that success. You've earned it. I put on that jet helmet just the way I, I had envisioned it so many times when I was, heck, seven years old on up. Strapped on the G suit. I looked around. There's no one in that jet except me. They're entrusting me for that with that supersonic jet to go out to the area to the MOA and rip it up. A B baby afterburner. Awesome. Awesome. You know, going vertical, doing rolls until I was just like, oh man, I did like 50 <laughs> snap rolls. It was awesome. And the whole time I'm just like, yeah, this is cool. This is a, re a realization of my vision. And it took a lot of work and a lot of time to get there. And I relished it. And after that, I established a new vision. What? You can never arrive. You can never just say, oh great, I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and now I'm done in life. You will stagnate and you will become unhappy in that. Most people will. You, what's your next vision? Go on to another level of success. You should always have a challenge in your life. You should always be progressing. You should always be putting your best foot forward and striving for something that, yes, might meet in failure. In that, there is challenge in there. In that, there is personal satisfaction. In that, there is happiness. I don't care who you are. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what economic background you come from. I don't care what country you live in. There's happiness in that. You cannot be satisfied with status quo. So as a second lieutenant, having graduated from undergraduate pilot training again, stepping off that jet, if you said, dude, what's your five-year plan? I probably wouldn't have had an answer. <laughs> you asked me a year later that I would. I was like, well, I want to be an aircraft commander. You know? And then I want to be an instructor pilot. Then I want to be an evaluator. And then after that, I have other goals where I want to go. You know, do you want to keep make the Air Force career? At that time, I wasn't so sure. I was still doing some research. I didn't know I was going to go to the reserve components for 10 years and retire. And that had a goal. Never arrived. So here I am, Lieutenant Colonel. You know, I if you said, oh, dude, by the way, you're going to pin on LC. What? No way. I say dude way too much. How are they going to pin LC on me? Well, because I qualified myself. You know, flying stuff, you know, I'll tell you maybe in the other video stuff that happened. The important stuff to me is flying the jet great and getting the mission done. Doesn't matter how tough it is, doesn't matter if your life is on the line, that's what you do. That's what counts in that job in the United States Air Force. Getting the mission done, helping out your fellow troops. So I pinned on LC, great, and I made the decision to retire. Punch, I've arrived, man, I'm done, right? No way, man. Welcome to the Nut and Fancy Project. Hmm. Nut and Fancy Project is a hobby gone crazy, right? But in it, I find great challenge and great satisfaction. Doing videos like this, talking to people all over the world, what a blessing it is for me to have that. I never would have imagined that I would ever have that, that I'm sitting in 
a room in my compound and I'm able to communicate through the miracle of technology to awesome people all over the world and perhaps help them. Remember that video I talked about earlier about motivations of why we do the things we do. Is it for money? Nope. Is it for fame? Nope. Is it to help people? Yep. Yeah, it's that. That motivates me. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for me to fulfill. I don't want this to be all about TMP. I'm just using it as an example. But it's a challenge for me to push it forward. Never arrive. What's your project? If you have arrived, maybe you are that ER doctor and you're very stoked about it. Congrats, by the way. I know that's very difficult to achieve. Or just whatever. What if you're that restaurant owner? You do have that restaurant. It is written up and loved by everybody in your town. You're awesome for it. Congrats. I got to wrap it up. I'm out of time. Good on you. But now you have to have a new vision. Where are you going? What are you going to do in life? Enjoy success. Take a moment, but don't inhale success and press on. Okay, and that's what I do in TMP. You know, I, one video project comes out, I don't sit there and go, oh, that's so awesome. I'm off to the next project, dude. I'm off to doing this video right now. Okay, there you have it. I'm going to call this, actually, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. Uh, maybe chair fly your life, just like I did in pilot training. Chair fly it. Sit down and plan your life out. Where are you going with your life? What's your five-year plan? What's your 10-year plan? Do you have a motivational mental image of where you want to be? What kind of person you want to be at that time? If not, cultivate one. Make it powerful. Make it meaningful. And you will find it propelling you through all the obstacles and dark days that are sure to come and you can achieve your goal whatever it is whatever it is have a vision protect your vision from people who would seek to destroy it to belittle it to tear it away from you and tell you you can't do that get to work don't be a daydreamer get to work and then finally never arrive make a new vision congrats on your success guess what you have five more mountains to climb after that, look at some of the greatest people that you've ever read about in those awesome books you should be reading. That's what they do. They never arrive. They keep on pressing on. I'm so out of time. It's not even funny. This is another net and fancy life philosophy video. We'll get back to the gear show, gear show soon enough. Thanks so much for watching. watching. Excuse my scruffy appearance. See you later.